Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you various reverb techniques in Ableton 12. In three levels, from basic to advanced, we will go from the controls of the reverb effect up to the advanced features of hybrid reverb. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content about Ableton coming up. If you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course and make sure to check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we have some sounds loaded up here in Ableton. First of all, we have just a clap sound from the TR-808 classic drum machine. Very basic clap. And the reverb effect is available, of course, from the audio effects tab. You can just drag it over and here it is. Sounds like this. First of all, in level one, let's go through the basic controls of the reverb effect so that you know how to use this. It's actually pretty powerful by itself, so it's really worth knowing what all these controls do. And we'll just discuss the most important controls here. First of all, probably the most important control is the dry wet knob. If you're using it like this on a sample, we would most likely set this dry wet somewhere between 0 and 50%. So at 0, obviously, it's completely dry, and at 100%, it's completely wet. It's just the reverb. And uh, yeah, you can just mix between these to achieve the right amount of reverb. We will go somewhere around 40-50%. And let's stick with that for now. The next control I want to take a look at right here is the stereo knob. If we maybe stay at 100%, you can hear. If you have headphones on or stereo speakers, it's a stereo signal. And if we now decrease this, it's completely centered. And the further we go, the wider the signal gets. So this is also really crucial because on some sounds you don't actually need that uh, wide reverb and uh, yeah it could make your drums a bit more powerful if you use mono reverbs here and there. This is really uh, worth tweaking. Obviously the decay is very important. It stays for a long time and if it's very short it's just giving us these very short reflections. So this decay knob in conjunction with the size knob, uh, these are the most adjusted controls here in reverb. If we take a large size, for example, anything above 100, and we take a long decay, it's going to be a long, huge reverb sound, like a whole reverb. And if we decrease the size, and we also decrease the decay, uh, it's going to sound completely different, it's going to change the space you're putting the sound in, sort of. So we could achieve an, a roomy type sound if we decrease the size and decrease the decay. Uh, so this way you can just add that natural touch to any sound by just adding a short decay, relatively low size. Now an important feature also is the pre-delay and uh, this basically uh, allows you to sort of offset the reverb to make it appear a bit later. This can also increase the realism if you use this well with the size and decay. On top of all of this, we've got a filter. We've got a low cut and a high cut. And if we enable both, we have a bandpass. And also uh, what we have is a diffusion network. So for example, if we do this, you can hear that the longer the sound stays, the less of the low frequencies we have. Similar thing is going to happen if we do this. Right, so the lower reverb frequencies stay a bit longer. Typically we would have a bit of a high cut and maybe a little bit of the diffusion network processing and something like this works. Another feature I wanted to take a look at is the chorus, but it's going to work quite well on this road sample. So let's hear that one dry. And here it is with reverb. And we can actually add some chorus to this sound. I hope you can hear the pitch fluctuations is getting a bit more mellow. And yeah, this chorus, in my opinion, it sounds great. I really like using it to uh, give a sound a very deep vibe. If we go higher, it gets very weird. But if we stick with a relatively low rate, and uh, adjust the amount, it can give it the sound a great vibe. And now let's disable it. 
it's like an LFO added to uh, the pitch of the reverb. So that would be the chorus, and these would be like the most basic features here of reverb. You would spend most of the time here in the reverb effect adjusting these settings. You've also got the early reflections and these controls right here, some quality controls. Maybe let's stick with what we have now and let's go to level two. In level two, we are going to have a vocal and we are going to actually use an audio effects rack to add additional effects on top of the reverb. So here is the vocal phrase we're going to be using. Some nights when I go to sleep so uh, what if you wanted to have reverb but process the reverb signal with different audio effects now, there are two approaches here in ableton one thing you could do is send this track here to a return track you can add return tracks here you can put a reverb on it and make sure they are set to 100 percent wet because you don't want dry signal there and uh, yeah so on top of this we could for example add saturation we could add eqing and we could turn this reverb uh, signal into something like this right and this could be mixed with this vocal phrase Some nights when I go to sleep. this type of processing is really common you could also now take different tracks for example take some backing vocals or take some synths and also route them into this return track and have the same reverb on different instruments and this basically gives you a very cohesive sound because you're sort of putting different instruments inside the same room so to speak but if you don't want to use a return track there's also an option of using an audio effect rack it's only that you won't be able to route different tracks into it. What we are doing here is basically, maybe I can show this, uh, if we take a reverb device, we can just right click, go to group, and now we have an audio effect rack. The same can be done by Control or Command and G. And you can expand the chains here. So what we have right now, if we go to 100% wet, is just the wet signal so we can rename this wet and we can add another chain which is going to be dry if we solo the dry signal Some nights when it's going to be just dry now we can mix the wet signal with the dry signal Some nights when I go to sleep. and you can for example do additional processing on top of the wet signal And now it can be mixed. Some nights when... Also, a nice feature of the audio effect track is that you can add a dry wet knob to control how much of uh, this signal you want. So we can do it like this. You can expand the chains, extract these bars to the right. You can drag the top end of the first one to the right. You can drag the top end of the second one to the left. And now when we scroll through with the up and down arrows here, or just click around, we're going to be getting here just the dry signal, Some nights and here just the wet signal. And we can take a macro, so enabling this button here, click the map button, and map this control right here, this bar, onto the first knob, maybe remove the other macros, and maybe hide the chains. And here we have the dry signal. Some nights when and here we have the wet signal. Some nights when and we can mix between these. Some nights when this is a really nice dry wet macro technique, which you can use with pretty much any audio effect you want. All right, so let's jump into level three. And here we have an ARP sample. Let's just play it. We're going to be using hybrid reverb, but first of all, I wanted to just tell you what this hybrid reverb device does. And it works based on impulse responses. And these impulse responses are basically recordings of reverb. So if we, for instance, took the reverb sound from this clap, we just froze this track. So we just have this sound. 
and we put this sound into the hybrid reverb, it's now using the impulse response of that reverb sound, it's going to mimic that. Thanks to that, it gives you a much wider range of reverb sounds. You can choose different uh, impulses, but we're going to use the default one. And another very important effect here is this nice detailed EQ8 style effect, only that we have four bands here, and you can visually do what we did on uh, the third track. So just basically boosting the high end, maybe cutting some lows. This is going to be very, very useful. You don't have to create an audio effect rack or a return chain to do this and this is just affecting the wet signal now a great curious feature of hybrid reverb that we're going to be using today is the shimmer and it's great for creating pitched reflections so i'm just going to just stick with the default mode here and just show you 100 percent of the reverb and now i'm going to enable the shimmer mode And as you can hear now, the sound is being pitched 12 semitones above. And that can sound amazing, especially on some pads or on some ARP sounds like this. And you can choose the, the pitch. For instance, if you wanted the pitch to be a fifth above, we could choose seven semitones. It just doesn't sound that good with this ARP right now. But yeah, you can choose the different pitches here. You could go down even, and you can use this in a creative way. But the default way of using it would be to add the shimmer an octave above. And you can adjust the amount of the shimmer here with this knob. And we could mix this in with the dry signal. So this just gives you a nice shiny sort of sound. This just gives you a lot of these bright, beautiful frequencies on top. And this can just sound amazing on different synth sounds and various different things. So the shimmer is absolutely worth exploring here in hybrid reverb. And there's obviously a lot more we could go into here, but this effect is a bit more advanced, so maybe it would require a separate video to go in depth. All right, I hope you will find this video on these reverb techniques useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with lots of start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out the beginner to advanced live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also see the everything bundle collector's edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All of the links you will find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, write a comment and I will see you in the next ones.